you're a beginning or uh, even an intermediate guitarist, you might be thinking about, um, you know, how, um, how do you go about learning different licks that go way up the neck like that last one did? Um, and how do I start to play different things up the neck, either scales or solos or chords? Um, beyond that first or, or some of the other positions without having to memorize everything. So we're going to start to explore that with I think the key, what I think is one of the absolute keys and that is the five chords and there's only five major chords that you need to know, the shapes I mean, the five major chord shapes that you need to know to be able to move all the way up and down the neck very comfortably for every chord um, in every key. Um, and so we're going to go over that today. Um, you'll, and, and you'll know this as the cage system. Um, I didn't make this stuff up. Um, but that's, the, that's what you're going to think about. The C, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape. So let's check them all out in turn and uh, we'll see how it all works. I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples at the end, okay? So let's start out. These are just the cowboy chords that you learn, and by the way, I, yeah, it's a bit of a hyperbole to say you must know them because there are other ways of learning this stuff. But I think this is the absolute easiest and the best because it's going to make you better at accompanying, it's going to make you better at soloing, and it's just going to make you more expressive musically, and it's, going to, and it's going to be a lot more fun. All right, so let's check them out. These are just the cowboy chords that you learned uh, when you first got your first acoustic guitar or whatever. Okay, here's the first one. Let's do them in order. The first one is the C chord. So it's just this one right here. Okay, now we're going to do all of these uh, in the normal position, and then we're going to shift them up two frets just to show what they look like when they bar them. Now, we normally don't bar them as we're going, or most of them, as we're going up the neck. Um, however, it's good to know because there's a couple of simpler forms that are going to be in there. Okay, so uh, here's the first one, and that's the C chord. Typical C is just played with the uh, on the fifth through first strings, um, third fret on the fifth, second fret on the fourth, and first fret on the second. Open G and open E string. Okay, if we're going to bar it, which we usually don't do. Playing it up two frets, this would be a D, but still using that same shape. Notice, in order to do this, I have to start playing with different fingers. That one's pretty hard, but this chord right here is pretty useful, and I'll play this one, the chords that are just on the four, three, and two. We'll call this a mini chord. That one's pretty useful. Here it is close up. Here's a C chord. Here's the C shape, two frets up. This is a D chord. Here's a simpler form of it, omitting the fifth string. Just playing the four, three, and two. Okay, the second chord is the G chord. I'm sorry, the second chord is the A chord. C, A. Yeah, that's how it goes. Encaged. I don't know how to spell. Here it is right here, and I'm just going to bar with the third finger, and you'll see why. Some people like to stack the fingers like this, but then as you move up, it becomes harder. I'm just going to play it like this. So I'm barring on the second, third, and fourth strings on the second fret. And I'm going to play the fifth through first. That's the A shape. If I go up two frets, the A shape looks like that. That's a B chord. Okay, so that's the A shape. Here it is close up. Here's an A chord. Here's the A shape played two frets up. Here is the G shape, the third one, C A G. Our beloved G chord. Here it is, barred up two frets. This would make it an A chord using that same shape. Now 
again, we usually don't play that. However, there's a simpler chord played omitting the fifth and the, I'm sorry, the sixth and the first strings that's like this. That's actually a pretty useful chord. You hear that as Hendrix plays that a lot. A lot of stuff like that. Here it is close up. Here's a G chord. Here's the D, here's the G shape, two frets up. This is an A chord. Here's the G shape, played by omitting the first and sixth strings. That's an easier form. Okay gang, here is the E chord. Big power E, you heard it in the opening. Right? It's that chord right there. Now if we're going to bar it, it's actually a pretty common bar chord to play that one. So here it is barred up two frets. That's an F sharp major chord. And here it is close up. Here's the E form. Or Here's the E form, two frets up. This is an F sharp chord. Finally, here is the D chord, and this is the little guy D. So I'm not barring with my, I'm not gonna play with my thumb on the sixth fret or anything like that. I'm gonna do something simple. Let's just play the four, three, two, one. Little guy D. Now here's the D shape played up two frets. I will confess I almost never ever play this chord. I almost always exclusively play the 4, 3, and 2, which would be like this. Or the top three strings, 3, 2, 1, which would be like this. That's the E chord using the D shape. And here it is close up. Here's the D chord. Here's the D shape, two frets up. This is an E chord. This is almost never played. Instead, we'll use the simpler 4-3-2 notes, <clears throat> or the notes on the third, second, and first strings. This is an E chord, using the D shape. Great. Now let's run through an example of this so we're, we can find it all over the place. Now caged goes in that order as well as you're moving up the fretboard. So that's helpful when you're just starting out to learn the different chords and where they are. Let's do the first one in C and then we'll do one in E and then we'll call it a day. Here it is in C. Here's the C chord in the open position. Now let's look at the A form. Here it is right here. Let's look at the G form. Here it is right here. Now let's look at the E form. Here it is right here. And finally, let's look at the D form. Here it is right here. Here's the 4-3-2 form. And here's the 3-2-1 form. Okay. One interesting thing would just be to play the four, three, and two strings all the way on those chords. And to do that, you'd find the following. Here's the C. Here's the open. Here's the A shape. Here's the G shape. Basically the same one. Here's the E shape. And the D shape. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do this one in E. So here we're starting with the open E. So the next one after E would be D, right? C A G E D. And that one would be this phrase, this format. That's on the 4 3 2. Or on the 3 2 1, it would be this. Okay, now we want the C form. Okay, that's this one right here. the G. And we're back to the E again. And 
that's it. Let's do the 4-3-2 uh, for this one as well. Open would be this. That's the E form. Here's the D form. Okay, here's the C form. That's a very useful one. Here is the uh, C, the A form. The G form, which is the same in this case. For just playing those strings. That's the G. And then we're doing E and the. Oh, that's the last one. The next one is the E. There it is. Okay. Practice all those in every key and you'll get it. I guarantee it. You know, pick a key, whatever it is A or B or C or G or whatever, and just learn those five shapes of that particular chord all the way up, um, up the neck. And that will really prepare you for doing all sorts of accompaniment and doing all sorts of solos that we're going to explore uh, a little bit later. Okay? Well, hope this one helped. We'll see you on the road. As always, take your comments and suggestions and let me know what else you want. All right. Take care.